listening to Kingston Community Radio on WGHQ Kingston. On your radio at 920 a.m. and 92.5 FM. And also online at mykcr.org. Central Hudson reminds you, when you're doing yard work, safety matters. If you use a ladder, be aware of overhead electric lines, including the service wire that runs to your house. Even wooden ladders can conduct electricity with dangerous results. And be very careful if there are electric lines above or near a swimming pool and you're working with skimmers, brooms, or other long-handled tools. Central Hudson wishes you a safe summer. Long ago, you wouldn't think of galloping on a horse while doing calligraphy, and you wouldn't have attempted to ride your bike while typing a letter. Yet, you think you can safely operate a multi-ton vehicle while texting? Behind the wheel is no place to multitask. If you want to BRB, drive now and text later. Lives depend on it. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. Hi, my name is Jackie Lavezzo. I'm from Lake Katrine, and I support the Kingston Community Radio because it is an invaluable resource to the community and its residents. This programming is brought to you by the Friends of Kevin Cahill. As a strong advocate of local broadcasting, Assemblymember Cahill urges you to support Kingston Community Radio with your time and donations. Your contributions keep KCR vital and on the air at FM 92.5, AM 920, and on the web at mykcr.org. Please join Assemblymember Cahill and send your gifts of $10, $25, or more to Kingston Community Radio, Post Office Box 4364, Kingston, New York, 12402. Together, let's keep KCR alive. Okay. We're on. Good morning, everybody. This is Hugh Reynolds and my sidekick, Mario Catalano, and this is Mario and me. Or is it me and Mario? <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, KCR land. We're happy to be back. And, um, you know, as, as you know, uh, we talk politics. You, uh, you Reynolds, um, was and continues to report on local politics for Ever. <laughs> quite a few years, five decades at least. Uh, I have been involved in politics and was the uh, former county Republican chairman. So even though he's the Democrat here and I'm the Republican, um, we try and set a good example for those of you out there who are partisans because we manage to get along and uh, respect each other's opinions. Um, although I'm thinking of um, maybe uh, picketing his house or um, trying to uh, shut down his, his, uh, his uh, lawn well, you, you, you don't or you do live something? I, you know, just something to um, agitate me. You know, to, I can't do that to you. You live in a gated community, don't you? Mm. <laughs> Unless I have a shotgun, oh. and it, it, it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be wise. But um, <laughs> speaking of shotguns, you um, <clears throat> this week. The inimicable governor, as only this turkey can, um, decides to declare war on guns and gun violence in a state where he and um, the inept Commissioner Zucker, Zucker, however you pronounce it, Zucker, um, killed whether inadvertently or accidentally or just incompetently, killed over 15,000 people in nursing homes, and he's going to declare a war on guns because maybe a handful of people have been killed by firearms. Interesting. What should we declare on him? Should we declare a war on Cuomo and Zucker? and get rid of these turkeys, uh, maybe uh, we should have a turkey shoot. Uh, 
<laughs> all right, all right, come on, come on. <laughs> Enough of the turkeys. Uh, comparing comparing the uh, pandemic that killed hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers, uh, most of them elderly people, the, the, the majority of them yeah. were uh, older folks, including the 15,000 that, that you cited. And uh, comparing that to uh, uh, gun violence, which is a serious issue, but nothing on a par. There's no, there's no comparison between these two uh, uh, situations. The, uh, if there's a dozen, unfortunately, if there's one, there's too many, so, so someone sure. gets shot. Sure. Usually some young, some young man in uh, in a, a city setting uh <laughs> children too for that matter these 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 drive-by shootings had, are crazy four, four homicides in old street county i mean it happens <clears throat> yeah and uh uh i think he's just uh, uh he's looking for a new a new crusade uh there's i, I believe 137 million i don't know where he came up with this number 138.7 million dollars that he's uh uh, accumulating for this for this very ill-defined war. You know what is the war? Is it is it more gun regulation? Is is that the answer? New York is already, I think, maybe second to California, or uh, Illinois, uh, the most the most heavily regulated uh, gun laws in the in the nation, and some of the worst gun violence. Yeah, yeah. Er, uh, Earth to Cuomo. The guys who are out there shooting up the neighborhoods, I'm really not using legal guns. They're going to figure out a way to manage to, to obtain guns, whether or not you heavily regulate. And essentially what you're doing is you're regulating legal gun owners, people who are very unlikely to commit a crime with a gun. And um, But, you know, guys like Cuomo just don't get it. And in particular, they, you know, they don't get the fact that... Uh, there's a very active shooting community. Uh, my sons uh, all shoot, and um, they do, you know, competition. They go to ranges. Uh, you know, they one of them hunts. This is all, in my opinion, healthy activity and um, making it more difficult for them to purchase a firearm. I mean, they're not and ammunition. Or I'm yeah yeah this is um, just not in, in you know in my opinion um, I think you're right he is um, he's trying to get folks to forget his performance uh, with uh, some of the the crazy stuff that he did during. But let's the let's look at the political side of this. Uh, he's he's uh, he's quite obviously driving his base which is standard politics now, and it, it drives to the left and it drives to the right. He held a fundraiser uh, in Manhattan, I believe, the last week or the week before, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much invitation only, uh, $10,000 a ticket. 10000 but you didn't get one. I didn't get one either. Yeah. But uh, people, people lined up. It sold out. Sold out at ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand, and this guy is under clouds all over the place. The clouds look like yesterday's uh, uh, storms, and uh, so he will be a formidable uh, candidate, if only uh, in terms of financing. And there's too many people who get who either ignore what goes on uh, in government and don't care, doesn't affect them. They think, well, you know, I was on that giving end. Yeah. Yeah, you were a lobbyist for the for the dental society, so you know you you know what I mean. I know how it works too. We all know how it works. You pay to play, and, yep. and if you don't, if you're not on that list, Mario Cuomo had a good line about that. He he, unlike his son, he had a sense of humor. He said when when he was the t when he was running in a primary, he couldn't raise a dime, and, and he says it was a horrible struggle. And and he said he beats Ed Koch narrowly. In the primary, and he said the money was pouring over the transoms. <laughs> That's a good line. That's a New York line. Well, yeah, and I mean, I can, I can say that from my experience, um, <clears throat> we seldom contributed um, to in primaries because uh, you don't you you know you don't make you don't necessarily make a lot of friends. People in primaries tend to hold grudges. And if you supported their opponent, um, whereas in general elections, uh, for whatever the reason, it's um, uh, a different side of the aisle, a different party, whatever. And uh, 
And, you know, uh, let's face it, these political action committee and lobbyists, they want to get some bang for their buck. And so uh, you're, you got, you got much better chance of getting a return on your investment in a general election than you do in a primary. You know, I, you know this better than I do, uh, Mara, but I would think that given the abysmal turnout in primaries, you get more bang for your buck as a lobbyist if you pick the right horse. I mean, you know how these guys are, are loyal in, in their fashion. If, if you supported them early on, I think you had an example of that, maybe without naming names, where you guys, you guys, it was like a horse race, and you guys picked the winner early, and he won, and, is, and he was yours I, forever. I actually, I actually cut my teeth as, um, um, and got a lot of no, notoriety in the dental uh, political community way back um, when Al D'Amato, yeah. the town supervisor from Hempstead, ran against an icon, Jacob Javits. <clears throat> and um, I called the American Dental Association um, political office in Washington, D.C., and I said to them, <clears throat> I think you guys ought to support D'Amato. And they're like, are you kidding? Yeah, why did you like D'Amato? <clears throat> because... Jacob Javits wasn't a Republican. Yeah. The only place he was ever vulnerable was in a Republican primary. In a general election, he overwhelmingly got a lot of Democratic votes and couldn't be beaten in a general election, but he was a liberal Republican. And um, that was, you know, I was, I was just starting out in politics at that point. But... <clears throat> The people in Washington decided to look into it a little further, started looking at some of the demographics and polling numbers and whatever they had back then, and decided to take a chance. And we were the first political action committee to actually make a contribution to Al D'Amato. We gave him $5,000, and which was the maximum you could do in a primary. <laughs> And uh, he never forgot it. He never forgot that we were the first ones out of the block. And, of course, once that happened, the American medical, everybody started looking at him at that point in time. So uh, you, uh, we have a caller. Somebody in Kingston's awake. Good morning, <laughs> caller. Uh, yeah, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. And I, I really like that story that you just shared. Uh, uh, um, and I, I have a question. Uh, speaking of primaries and, and how, uh, you know, there's such a low turnout for primaries, and I was just thinking, why in this country are we really a two-party political system? You know, there's some other parties, but they, they don't make headway. And you look at some other countries, like I think Britain and other places, some other countries, you know, they have more options. Do you think we'll ever have a third party that really makes way or something else, or do you think this is just who we are? And how come? Are we, are we a two-party system for the most part here? You have us baffled, caller. So uh, let, me, <laughs> let me see if, <coughs> let me see I, if, I, can, uh, night, I, if I can add some uh, color to that one. Um, yeah. uh, great question. Great question. And so here's... Here's the deal. Um, <clears throat> the, because of the nature of our government, we were set up in a, as a two-party system. Mm. So what happens is, see, we're, we're a little bit different because a lot of the European countries have parliaments, and they can call elections at any point in time, and... You can run uh, and from any, any party perspective. Uh, a prime example is Israel, where uh, it's a democracy, but they've got about 15 political parties. At the end, of, uh, after the election, they all get together and form coalitions. And those, uh, those democracies in Europe are generally coalition-style governments, in the U.S., we have um, a very rigid system. As an example, okay, we have a, and have had a couple of very, um, a very uh, influential parties. 
we have the conservative party which in, in is a pretty big party and we have the working families party we used to have the independent parties independence party and none of them have election commissioners the mm. law states that the election commissioners there'll be a democrat and a republican mm. never and the conservative and whatever so <clears throat> in this country they're always going to be minority parties because they can't get status unless the law changes. So we are essentially structured um, <clears throat> as a two-party, as a, a, a two-party system, and um, and and then there on those two parties, as you know, um, there are a lot of offshoots. For instance, <clears throat> there are republic there there are uh, uh, liberal. Republicans, there are conservative Republicans, there are crazy Republicans, and the same thing applies to the Democrats. So easily, you know, you could have the uh, the AOC progressive wing be in their own their own party, except they they would have no status. So they stay with the with the Democrats and try and swing them in that direction. So, but. <clears throat> In, in fact, the way our government is set up, it is set up to be, and, and our founding fathers did this way back because they had, uh, I believe, they had some suspicion that the uh, European um, style of governments were going to be counterproductive because there were too many um, different groups in this country. <laughs> and... They, they, it, it's like trying to herd cats. So mm -hmm. they decided to go with, uh, with two parties. They gave um, those two parties uh, essentially carte blanche to run the government, and that's and that's the reason that oh, I, great, from great. my perspective, yeah. anyway. And from my perspective, <clears throat> listener, uh, the Constitution did, did not provide, didn't even mention a two-party system. Uh, there was some, there was a good deal of suspicion about a two-party system where you would have these conflicts all the time, left and right, Democrat, Republican. It evolved. Uh, the country started, uh, not to give history lessons, essentially as a one-party system, and that was George Washington. Nobody challenged him either in either election or They wanted incumbent. him to be king, so, and he declined. He declined, yeah. That, that, that was not a strong sentiment. I can't imagine people who just fought the, fought the king wanted another one. But uh, it, uh, it evolved into, into the, uh, through the constitutional process. It evolved into the Federalists uh, and the uh, Anti-Federalists. So, so you had these two factions that became parties, and they, they evolved over time. I, the, the, the real Democratic Party uh, uh, dates to uh, and Andrew Jackson, which was a populist party, uh, mm. pe uh, people, uh, party of the so-called so party of the people. I think it's somewhat different now. Uh, I think in modern times, though, uh, caller, we we could be uh, uh, we we could be even more fragmented. That's not necessarily a bad thing, where uh, different points of view, uh, because of the modern communication systems we have, the web and everything else. Uh, mm. uh, Cortez, for instance, has I believe something, something like four million regular followers. People who hang on everything she says, and. Uh, and and the major parties have to pay attention to that. If you if you've got a block of four million people who are pretty pretty of one mind, uh, yeah. you know there 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 is divisions within that group, of course, like any group. So uh, so that's changed. I'm not sure the parliamentary system would work in this country. Uh, I can't imagine having elections like they do in Israel or England, for that matter. Uh, whenever they want. Uh, whenever you feel like it, whenever you get a crisis, my, the, the yeah, COVID. As soon as you don't get a vote of confidence. Yeah, and that can come pretty easily. Uh, the COVID uh, crisis that came might have, uh, in a parliamentary system, might have might have created a whole new government to deal with it. So uh, it's it's pretty complicated. Um, and, you know, let me add that you're right. And, and, and what happens is when, uh, when you have, you start to form a splinter party, like the Tea Party, uh, started. Um, they had no place to go. They couldn't get ballot lines and whatever. The only thing they could do is get involved with Republican politics and win Influence some primaries. Them. And and they're essentially in this country forced. 
these other parties that could eventually evolve into splinter parties are essentially forced back into the system, and they have to they have to pick sides. They have to either go Democrat or Republican, and uh, and that's why and and so it's self perpetuating. In this county, I think that the second leading party, a group block of voters, are non-enrolled voters. They they're they're not enrolled in in any in, in any party. Which is you know is obviously their preference, but they then they allow uh, two hundred and something people like they did in the city of Kingston to take Dave Donaldson out, because mm. if you've counted the thousands of non-enrolls in that district they never had they never had a say mm. and that's that's kind of given up a, a a very basic right yeah that's why i enrolled uh not to say myself but, but about 10 years ago uh in a very close mayoral election uh in a primary i think it was settled by 10 votes yeah uh out of uh thousands tens of th uh, thousands of uh of enrolled democrats uh my vote didn't count at all I mean, it wasn't couldn't even vote and in the general election it, it doesn't matter much uh we're going to move on uh uh caller thanks for that thanks for that question we we appreciate it Mara, check your list there we got we we've dealt with cuomo i think what, what do you got well we 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 started with uh the infamous governor and his war on guns. We discussed this fundraiser. I always like to mention that he is uh, hearing footsteps. Letitia James is, uh, I still think, is going to challenge him in a primary, uh, no matter how much money he raises. And she's got the Trump cards because the, Trump cards. Yeah, when 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 they <laughs> when they when they when they finish this investigation of his book deal and some of the other deals and the, the dealing is behind the scenes dealings and uh i think he's going to be in trouble <clears throat> and um that though that ten thousand dollar a plate so i think a good portion of that's going to go to a uh, legal defense fund <laughs> so let's see how he'll, he'll get the state to defend let's them. see how that works out yeah. so in, now that we're taking on some big fish here Yui. uh how about this uh, Delgado announcement? Our uh, Congressman, our Congressman, Antonio, Congressman Antonio. Delgado, uh, interesting guy. Um, I got a challenge for anybody listening. Um, I know that uh, Congressman Delgado now has been in uh, Congress for um, two and a half years. Uh, yeah, and and uh, this year he he had ten bills passed in the House. And he had two signed into law. That's about a, an efficiency rate of about 20%. And what were those bills? I uh, They're probably minor. No clue. No clue. But, uh, I mean, it's my shame on me. I probably should have uh, yeah, uh, checked it out. But, but anyway, the, uh, the, the challenge I have is if anybody can, uh, can help me become better informed, um, and enlighten me and let me know if there it was ever a bill that our congressman voted for or against when his vote was the opposite of Nancy Pelosi's vote so all i want just if you if you're out there and you're familiar with the man's track record Please let me know if San Francisco actually has two congressmen or if the Hudson Valley has one and San Francisco, California has one. So uh, that's my challenge. And remember, I'm the Republican here, and I'm looking at this with a very jaded eye because I'm still waiting to find this man break ranks with Nancy on any issue unless, you know, he's just a clone. So anyway, let's get let's get to this announcement because this is very exciting. We were promised by uh, numerous numerous uh, press releases, Yui, that there was um, going to be a nine hundred million dollar infrastructure project. I think it's actually over a trillion now. 
now you know now the pork is sneaking in and and you know the leaders are throwing in a few pet projects here and there and then you know like yeah, the, it adds the, up. the bridge to nowhere in alaska and then you know all those things so let's let's just round it out and say there are about uh 900 uh let's say uh, tr- uh um billion billions available to um uh, to be spread out around the country for infrastructure projects. And remember, a billion is a thousand million. So that's some serious uh, do-re-mi, as they say. It's three times the Ulster County annual budget. Yeah. No, 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 30 times. A billion is three times. Oh, the, a billion is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, three times the Ulster County. I'm sorry. Okay. And of course, this is nine hundred billion, uh, nine hundred trillion. No, no not trillion. no, no, nine hundred billion. Okay, let's not. You know, when you're throwing zeros around, yeah, it's really hard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so anyway, so the long and the short of it is, um, by if you do, if you sit down and um, you do some math, and um, by way of full disclosure. I had to, there were so many zeros, I had to actually go to a calculator to figure this one out. And you divide it by 435 congressmen. Districts. That means that about $200 million in infrastructure projects should come into each congressional district. On average. On average, if it's if it all if, things being equal, if it's shared, which they equal. never are, yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, just so, re- how much? How much? Let's get to the bottom line here, if you'll pardon that pun. How much has uh, the, uh, the our congressman announced so far? Well, our congressman so far has announced um, four projects, and those four projects totaled twenty million dollars. So that is just shy of the two hundred million that <laughs> ought to be coming into the district. And, it, and remember, he's a member of the Appropriations Committee. Really? I think Hinchy, so. Hinchy was. I don't know if they'll go. Oh, you is. don't? Okay. I don't think so. Oh, okay. So he doesn't have. You know, he's only a. Yeah, he's a second even term voting congressman. in lockstep with the Nancy. He yeah. still hasn't managed to. All right. Well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So he's the rookie, and and uh, you know he's getting he's getting his feet wet. Um, but I'm, I'm, uh, you know, he's, he's still 180, um, uh, million, million short, a million short at the moment. And we're going to cheer, we're going to cheer him on because there are a lot of streets that need blacktopping around here. A lot of, a lot of sewer work that needs to be done. The, the sewers in Kingston are collapsing and, and we need, you know, and other places as well. Um, we have bridges that need repairing. Um, we've got, you know, a lot of infrastructure, and in particular, he keeps talking about broadband, but, you know, there's always going to be a problem with communications when you can't put a cell tower up anywhere or a communications tower up anywhere because of, you know, the... uh, You know, let's talk about broadband for a moment, Mario. I I find this a curious subject uh, in talking to people. To me, it's a no-brainer. <clears throat> that, that 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 we have uh, total access, like we did with telephones. I mean, you, you didn't you, you didn't get blind spots or dead zones. Yeah, you call people. Uh, I I talked to a lot of people about this, mostly because it's been around forever. Yeah, this broadband thing. It's like uh, it's like a bumper sticker thing. One of the things I get from from a lot of people who don't have broadband, and they say we don't want towers. I said. Yeah, but it's a safety issue. If your if your husband uh, has a heart attack, yeah. if you can't get to uh, if you can't get to nine yeah. uh, eleven, yeah. you know, moments, uh, uh, fire trucks, uh, anything, any kind of emergency, emergency vehicles, and absolutely. yet, and yet, and and these are these are kind of, many of them. I mean, you know, we you and I talk to a lot of people. They're they're from all different walks of life. It isn't the the guy sitting on a mountain with his with his million dollar uh, estate. It's kind of kind of regular regular people. Uh, I don't see a great groundswell, and I would say I'm in favor of it of the of, of total of, of access. I don't see a great groundswell 
uh, uh, erupting. Uh, people petitioning the government or uh, going to board, town board meetings. You know, I don't understand why, why that in, is. Yeah, uh, um, in, in <clears> my <throat> opinion, again, this is a great failure of government because eventually I think what is going to happen is <clears throat> people and, and companies, private enterprise, are putting in many satellites yeah, by the say. hundreds, maybe even thousands, that they're shooting up and uh, putting into orbit. And eventually, I believe, yeah, broadband is going to shift so <clears throat> nobody's objecting to all this crap that we're putting into space, <clears throat> and we'll be able to get past the, I don't want a cell tower on, you know, Ohio Mountain. Yeah. And and so maybe at some point in our lifetimes, we'll be able to drive out Route 28 and actually have self-service. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> no. In our lifetimes, which, yeah, are, you know. which are not long. So <laughs> yeah. <week>. So, <clears throat> but uh, that's that's the deal. Um, uh, I think I think it's probably going to have to be transferred to space in order. And now, now again, <clears throat> there are. There are other downsides to that, one of which is the weather can have a major impact on what's coming from up above. And, and so it may not be quite as reliable as, a, as, as cell towers. I would think that uh, given the, um, uh, the technological uh, genius of, in this country that they'll, they can figure out almost all these things. Well, they've already figured out that they need to put satellites up because they can't get uh, they can't get land based systems past some of the crazies out there. You know, just just the notion of stringing wires between telephone poles. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's so nineteen. It's nineteenth century. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and most of your new communities have everything underground. Yeah, which you know is I think great. You know. Well, uptown Kingston, when they did uh, urban re re urban renewal, uptown urban renewal yeah. back in the uh, '60s, early '70s, mm -hmm. they buried all the utilities. Yeah. You don't see any yeah. telephone poles on Wall Street anymore. No, I know it's great. It is. It's, it's, it's great. beautiful. It's, 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 same with same with downtown. <clears throat> well, all right. We need some more renewal. So anyway, um, now that we've covered all the heavy hitters, um, just a reminder. Um, this is Kingston Community Radio, uh, U Reynolds, Mario Catalano. Our phone number is 331-9255. We'd love to have you join us. We're talking politics today, as we do every other Friday. And uh, we've covered uh, the, the, the governor, we've covered the congressman. And now we want to get a little closer to home. And uh, Yui, do you want to... Uh, you want to mention um, uh, baseball for a second? Because sure. I think, I think it really is appropriate to. I've been a uh, shout out. To yeah, say. I've been following the career. You, you may want to talk about the Yankees because I know it's near and dear to your heart, and you can have the stage on that one. Uh, I've been following as have, as as have a lot of people in the area have been following the career of uh, Zach Short, who I think is a 2015 graduate of Kingston High School and of course a terrific baseball player uh, in high school and a terrific basketball player and uh, I have a particular uh, affinity to the Short family uh, his father once gave me a golf lesson he, he failed miserably <laughs> uh, I, uh, uh, Ed, uh, their grandfather uh, uh, rest his soul Ed Palladino was uh, was the influence was the factor in luring me to the Daily Freeman all those years ago, and uh, uh, we used to go to the games, and uh, I, would, I would sit with Eddie at uh, Zach's games, and now now Zach's in the major leagues now. Now this is, I, I think there's been other other local uh, ball players to make the majors. Uh, Mike Ferraro comes to mind back in the sure. '60s when yeah. when he was yeah. with the Yankees, and a lot of people knew uh, knew Mike. Uh, now now he's in the majors. And he's with he's with Detroit. It's been a it's it's been a he's he, he's had to work to get there. He's about 25, I think, just turned 25, which is kind of middle age for a ball player. 
uh, the superstars come up when they're about 19, it seems. And uh, and I think he's playing pretty good ball. Uh, he's uh, he's he's been up maybe 30 times. He's had a couple of home runs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, He's apparently got a pretty good batting eye. I think his on-base percentage is... Uh, he draws a lot of walks. He, he does. really, really does not swing at bad pitches. He's very disciplined. Very disciplined Extremely. hitter. Extremely. And he's hitting two seventy three. last time I looked, which would put him, I think, in the top tier, the top, at least the top third of major league hitters these days because oh, nobody yeah. hits. Yeah. There's guys starting in the majors and yeah. making millions of dollars and hitting under two hundred. So yeah, I think Yankees he's. Could use some half of their club is not. Hit, hit. I think the Yankees would definitely trade for, uh, trade trade for Zach Short. So uh, anyway, we, I certainly look forward to seeing Zach. I read the papers every day with the box scores to you know to see. Oh the, yeah, the other thing is done. you know he's a great defensive player. Terrific, and he can play almost every position on the field, which makes him extremely valuable. Hey, I've got a Ferraro story which I want to share with listeners. All right, this goes way back. Ferraro, uh, Mike is playing. Uh, he had a sensational spring, spring training. I think there was a there was some kind of an award that the Yankees gave to the best the best rookie in spring training, and and Mike won it that year. Had a really wow. good spring. Yeah. So he made the big club, and he uh, and he came up. Uh, what did he play? Third base. Third base. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think he still holds the major league record for putouts by a third baseman. It was one of those days where everybody hit it down the yeah, third. Yeah. 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 And uh, so that's nice to be in the books. So. Anyway, uh, Frank, Frank Messer was the Yankee. Remember him, Frank Messer. He was the uh, uh, he was the uh, Yankee broadcaster. Okay. And, okay. Uh, so uh, the Yankees are playing. I, I think it was Cleveland. Cleveland, and uh, 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 they were they were headed home, and uh, Messer sitting at the bar after after the ball game, BS about the ball game with the bartender who was an avid fan, and uh, so. Uh, the bartender said something about this uh, Ferraro kid. Uh, he looked pretty good at third. And uh, uh, Messer says to him, uh, well, uh, he says, you know, he's, uh, he's from the Hudson Valley. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's a popular ball player. And, and they're going to have a day for him at the Yankee Stadium on Sunday when they, when they, when they get back to, to, to the ballpark. And the bartender says, they're going to have a day for a guy who's been up for like two months? And he's hitting... At that point, he was he was hitting badly. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's he's on an over twenty yeah. uh, streak, and he says uh, he says yeah, but he's uh, he's well known. He's got a lot of fans, you know, up at, up at, up in the Hudson Valley. He says, I'll bet you, Mister says, I'll bet you a, a, a steak dinner when we come back here that they sell out Yankee Stadium for Mike Ferraro Day. <laughs> so the bartender says, you're on. Well, what Messer didn't tell him, and I was there for this. Was that it was bat day? Bat day. Yeah. They would have sold out Yankee Stadium for Mario Catalano. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and so the bartender looks at the box scores and says, "40, 52,500 people." Wow. It's a great story. <laughs> that is a good story. Yeah. And it was Mike Ferraro. <coughs> Mike Ferraro. Uh, Mike Ferraro. They, they also gave out bats. Oh, that's that's good. That is cool. Yeah, we yeah. had we, we had a whole bus. A couple of buses yeah. went down, and we took, we had box seats. It was it was a great day. <laughs> well, I'm in mourning for my uh, my Yankees right now. You know, and uh, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this or not, but I I, I grew up in Brooklyn. We were the only Yankee fans um, on our street, uh, and we had no choice because um, my mother's oldest brother, my uncle, my uncle Jack, was uh, a man about town, and uh, he and the babe used to go out drinking. So he was good friends with Babe Ruth, and he would get us tickets wow. to Yankee games. He would take us. We had no money. But my uncle Jack had his own business, and he was pretty successful. And he, uh, you know, um, so he he'd get uh, th from the baby, he'd get some really great seats, the Yankee games, and you know he, he had a season pass and, and and whatever. And so he would take, and it was a large family. I mean, my mother, there were eight in my mother's family and cousins and whatever. So he would take different groups he'd take my father and i to a game he would take my uncle and one of his kids to a game and um and so we had no choice it was you know you had we had to be yankee fans and so i grew up a yankee fan and um 
still a, a Yankee fan, but it's get it's it's really getting difficult, you know, to watch them. Uh, give I up. think Yankee fans are victims of their own success. They're they're. I don't really. I like you, Mario, in, in almost every respect. But but I I'm not nuts about Yankee fans. They expect. They really expect to win the World Series every single year. Well, a lot of teams hope they will, and they yeah, work yeah, at it, yeah. but they don't. In fact, the Yankees don't. They haven't won a series since oh, 09. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're talking, you're yeah, talking uh, over a decade now, and, 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 and they lose one or two games in a row. Oh, my God. This well, my, my issue is this. Um, if you're going to spend the kind of money that they spend, then you should expect at least some reasonable return on the investment. And, uh, and for whatever the reason, you know, they've got, what, the third highest payroll in baseball, and, I mean, they they can't beat the Toronto Blue Jays. So, Well, Los Angeles and uh, Boston have high payrolls, and they seem to be doing all right. Yeah, I think, yeah, well, I think that's what I said. I think we're third. But the point is, you know, um, can't beat anybody uh, you know oh my last night some pitcher in seattle one hit them yesterday was he the rookie i think he's a rookie he was a rookie and he one hit they got one hit well they hadn't seen him before yeah that's it i guess whatever whatever the reason um you know they need uh they need a new batting coach they need in my opinion um a uh, um a new Trainer. conditioning coach conditioning. because, uh, you know, they're constantly injured. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. Uh, they can't even run out ground balls for fear of pulling a hamstring. Yeah. I mean, what the heck is going on? Um, you never see anybody stretching. Uh, well, you, you see a few of them, but they're not even doing the proper stretches, and you know, before the game. So they don't stretch out. They don't, they're not conditioned properly. They're too muscular. How's their teeth? Uh... <laughs> Well, now there's an issue here. Ah. The teeth. There is a, there is a <laughs> major issue here. Domingo Herman could not start the other night. Because, toothache. What's that? Was it a toothache? He needed a root canal. <laughs> he he needed a root canal. the The other night he was scratched from the lineup, and because he was getting a root canal, an emergency root canal in Seattle. And I'm telling you, they need a new team dentist. <laughs> anyway, he did get he, he did get his root canal done. Got to the stadium, and uh, came in and th threw a uh, 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 he came in as a reliever and um, and threw a uh, a three run dinger. He gave up a three run home run, and that's I I blame the dentist for this <laughs> because if he had taken his time. And done that root canal slowly. Yeah, he couldn't. Have, he wouldn't have made it back to the stadium, and they should have kept him the hell out of the game because he gave up a three-run homer. You know. Now again, granted, you know he was probably in a little pain, and they may have had him on some meds or whatever. But um, you know, most root canals these days are totally painless. You know, with the new technology, you don't even most. Yeah, you don't even know they're done. So. I, I, you know, I guess that's he's a victim. The the Yankees were a victim of the new technology. He was actually able to have a root canal come back and throw an inning and give up a three run home run. I've heard of lame excuses before, <clears throat> Catalano. That's the worst. The guy had a toothache. The guy was scratched for an emergency root canal. You can check what was written about it, and I'm telling you, <clears throat> bad teeth. I'm looking at the smiling face on page one of the Daily Freeman of, of Paul Padalino. I'd be smiling as well. I would be smiling if somebody would pay me 230000 or two hundred. Wasn't the Wasn't Kingston High School one of the lowest rated high schools in the Hudson Valley? Was, weren't we like number 46 out of 60 or something? In I terms think worse of, than that. Oh. At the lower 10%. I mean, 56 yeah, out of 60. Yeah, yeah. It, was pretty, it was pretty grim. Well, you know, mm -hmm. they probably gave him that raise and that extension because we weren't last. <laughs> you know, when, you know <laughs> like, like Warren Buffett always says, uh, the key to a successful marriage is having low expectations. 
And, you know, that's probably also the key to a successful school board. If you set your expectations low enough, the superintendent looks like a superstar. I can't agree with that, but let's just, uh, I, I think he's, uh, the, the, these are handsome salaries, but uh, they're within the, I guess, within the range yeah, that yeah, yeah. superintendents, yeah. And, and it is the biggest school district <clears throat> by far in the, uh, in the county. The, th the, the thing that struck my eye uh, in this article was, uh, Patalino's pledge to the board, as it were, that he would have 100% graduation by 2024. So this is basically, this is the incoming freshman class, mm -hmm. if not the sophomore class. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that, that, is a, that is a high bar, 100% uh, graduation, particularly well, g given the record. If, if you're ranked if you're ranked in a lower 10% of the school districts in the Hudson Valley, and that includes some districts that, that struggle like Ellenville yep. uh, and so forth, uh, to get to 100%, it's, uh, he, he indicates it's, it's going to be a long haul, though. I don't, I don't see them. I'd like to see them get there. Uh, but uh, he's talking about uh, a different way of teaching. Uh, I think they call it phonetics, phonetics. Uh, at the lower grades, so that so that the the youngest children uh, get to uh, get to read earlier and and oh. better. So that that's the foundation. If 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 you can't read, you can't absolutely you, you can't you can't do the job. So I think that 2024 might have been a typo. It's probably 2034 because the, the these kids are in the second grade. That, that exactly they, exactly they, they teaching. Uh, yeah, if anybody has any uh, light they want to shed on that uh, uh, deal, the Padalino uh, uh, um, contract extension, et cetera, we're at 331-9255, Kingston Community Radio. Give us a shout. Love to hear. Um, usually school board stuff you, uh, can generate a lot of, um, uh, you know, angst and anxiety, um, um, people with opinions. So who knows? Maybe we can shake out some callers here this morning. Yeah, people with opinions, few of whom seem to vote in school board elections. Yep. Well, guess what? We, we got have a caller. Call. See, you mentioned school board and bingo. Good morning, caller. Welcome. Uh, yeah, to good, good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, gentlemen. Um, so I, I think that the, the goal of 100% uh, graduation uh, rate, I mean, that's certainly a great goal. Uh, but um, there's a lot of reasons why a kid may not graduate, and it may not even have to do necessarily with how do they learn how to read in the beginning years. There's a lot of factors, particularly during teenage years, from uh, home circumstance sure. uh, uh, to, to mental health to other things like that. And so in this plan or this goal, this approach, uh, I should hope that uh, they're looking at um, other aspects of a teenager's life that potentially would keep them uh, from being in school or graduating, uh, because I think it would have to be a comprehensive uh, mm -hmm. uh, approach in that respect. I wanted to make that point. That's a good point, uh, yeah, caller. Great point. You know, one of the factors that a number of school districts have. Uh, discussed but haven't adopted is is the is the notion not the notion the fact that teenagers uh the schedule that they're on now the eight roughly eight to four is kind of counter to their uh, uh uh the reality of a teenager's uh uh, uh sleeping habits the, these kids go to school at eight o'clock in the morning they're still half asleep yeah. and, and 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 there's been a lot of study on this obviously and that the, the the schedule should be more like uh, ten. <laughs> I I would have liked to have slept slept in until nine o'clock in the morning when I was in high school, but more like ten to ten to five, uh, when the kids are alert and they're and they're and they're and they're and and they're 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 better able to learn because <laughs> because they are alert. The problem has been it's always a problem for every for every idea. There's ten ten different uh, ways not to do it. Uh, is that the extracurricular activity at the end of the school day uh, is uh, is is compromised? Uh, sports and, and, and don't, don't the and again I'm I'm completely ignorant on the subject, but 
Um, don't the hours uh, have to be negotiated with the teachers' union as well? I, I mean, I don't so. think the school district just makes up the hours. I think they. Ha I think that's all contractual, and I, and I might I might be wrong, but you know. Yeah. But you, there are there are there are a lot of cons you know constituencies here. You got parents. You've got kids. You got teachers. You got administrators. You got taxpayers. I mean. There are a lot of there are a lot of different groups. Yeah, the moving that, parts in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the notion that that, that the call the caller uh, pointed out, who, who quite frankly sounds like sounds like he might have been in high school himself, uh, is that uh, uh, teenagers' lives are you know we all know from experience there yeah. uh, teenagers' lives are pretty complicated and uh, the the more holistic approach to a to a kid who's who who might be having problems at home. And his oh, yeah. in school. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it, there's a and lot especially of... Especially with, you know, the hormone changes oh, and things. Oh, of course. Kids are, kids are more prone to, um, you know, to having uh, ups and downs. The yeah, it, it's tough. It's not easy being a kid these days, let me say. And there's a lot of, te there's a lot of temptations out there for, for, uh, for a kid. The parents are busy. Uh, the home life isn't mom and dad and, and the two kids sitting down to dinner every night. Yep. That's, that's probably a rarity. It's probably on weekends. Well, we got a call. I guess he hung up. He just wanted to hear your answer. Oh, okay. okay. Well, he got he got our answer. We gave it to him anyway. So, what do you think? Um, we'll have to keep tabs on this and see how this graduation. But right now, I mean, uh, I hate to say it, but we're starting way behind the uh, the uh, the average here. We're we're one of the worst graduation rates in the Hudson Valley and um, this you know he's got he's got to work off of you know he's got to work off of that oh okay good morning caller and uh, and, and thank you for the follow-up question yeah and uh, as a follow-up question to this point so uh, given what we've just now gone through uh, with the pandemic and and how virtual learning <coughs> had to be used for better or for worse uh, is that in the mix, in the discussion, uh, one, you know, any way that maybe something good came out of this that could help reach this goal, or two, how this was a hindrance, mm -hmm. and um, uh, it is some thought given to this kind of context. Uh, if if this is a goal to achieve, um, could it be achieved through difficult circumstance like this? So I'm just wondering. Uh, to what degree is virtual learning even being spoken about, given what we're coming out of, and, and is that informing this goal, for better or for worse, in some way as well, uh, if that's been spoken to? Wow. I don't know, caller. Uh, it's, it's, it's a work in progress. As, as you noted in your earlier call, uh, it, is, uh, it is noteworthy. That, that that this district has uh, has set a goal that that in itself is unusual because, yeah because if you don't reach your goal then yeah, you're, you're, then putting you're, your, you're putting your neck on the line yeah you're putting yourself on the spot and you could be uh you could be criticized and worse maybe uh, he expects to retire yeah. by then so he's setting a goal and, and it, figuring on it, his way it, out it would, the door it would seem to me that you know while while the goal of a hundred percent certainly sounds nice and isn't that great it may be more practical to have uh, a goal or goals defined uh, differently uh, as, as a benchmark of success that would be more tangible and practical that could get a kid to graduation, right? Mm. But something that, because it just seems like a lofty goal, not that that's not a great end game, but uh, the factors that will go into that, you think you would need that really broken down and maybe focused on some sub-goals that could end up with the greater one and, and get buy-in about those sub-goals and a plan around those. That, to me, would seem like a, 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 a better way to um, present to the public <coughs> what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. I think that one of the things that's missing from that article, you, is any... Um, type of um, uh, relationship and context yeah. to how many districts is there even one in the entire Hudson Valley that has a hundred percent graduation rate my my guess is there are none 
which means the newspaper and, and, and the Board of Education <coughs> was sold a bill of goods because I'm sitting, <coughs> I'm sitting on that um, Board of Education. I'm thinking, well, this sounds good. We just gave this guy, you know, a big bump in pay. <coughs> we just gave him a contract extension. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> he's going to promise us the world here. But somebody's got to call them out and say, all right, so how are you going to do this when no other school district in, in, in the entire Hudson Valley can do it? And, and now all of a sudden you start to realize that this may be just a little touch of, uh, you know, um, politicking. Politicking I, uh, and... I thought the missing one of the missing and yeah. I thought one of the missing elements in this story, and it's 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 checkable enough, is that uh, you know, what is the graduation rate now, and what has it been for for during this during his tenure? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's been either flat or uh, maybe maybe worse than that. Yeah, they, they uh, were, it, and I I think with that point, I think a better goal to define would be uh, we're going to increase. From our current graduation rate, we're going to increase by a certain percentage, you know, or that we're going to have uh, uh, students, um, you know, excelling in, in science or math or, you know, break it down where it's more about we're going to show improvement uh, uh, that can get to that graduation rate. That seems more tangible and practical um, to, to, to get to an end game. And, I, and so it just seems that the 100% it's just a very lofty idea. I, I'm just surprised that that that's, that wasn't broken down uh, in, in the beginning of how would you get there. Um, yeah, okay, call. well, thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, right. Thank you for the call. We call that pie in the sky, where I come from. Uh, and the problem is that, you know, uh, nobody asks the tough questions. Newspaper doesn't ask the tough questions. They, the school board, they're, they're probably half asleep at the switch, you know, uh, and they're just listening to this guy, you know, pontificate, and he's going to do this, and he's going to do that, and nobody says, hey, listen, can we have a reality check here? You're at 60% right now. How the hell are you going to get to 100% in three years? And, uh, you know, <clears throat> um, and this is where you are. You're number 56 out of 60 districts or whatever, and, um, uh, you know, <clears throat> and instead, they jump all over this, I'm going to graduate 100%, and that's the excuse to give this guy a big bump and a big, because if you did it on performance, he should actually take a pay cut. Well, we don't know that yet, Kat, so, <laughs> you know, let's, uh, let's, let's revisit this at a later date. Let's get some school board members to call in and explain themselves. Can you name five of them? I can't name one of them. And, <laughs> and, and you know, <laughs> and Shaughnessy, Shaughnessy, well, Shaughnessy. Well, you know, they're they're like the you know the hidden seven. How many are there? Seven, nine. Nine. I think. Oh, they're nine. Okay, yeah. Well, they're the uh, you know the um, the blind nine, the unknown nine, the blind nine, the blind nine. Yeah, I like that. That's good. Now, can we talk about something really serious here? Or sure. um, We talked about uh, Yankees. We talked about let's, Yeah, let's talk about something quickly because we're going to be going to break shortly. And um, <clears throat> so let me just run by this situation out there in West Hurley where uh, some developers are trying to convert the old uh, school. West Hurley into, School. Yeah, into yeah. apartments. and. Folks out there are really up in arms. They they don't want these apartments. I don't know why. And the other thing I'm trying to figure out is um, this workforce rule, this 10% rule. Uh, is that only in the city of Kingston, or, or is that in Ulster County? Um, I mean, do they have to have any of these apartments that are not market rate? That's, I guess, what I'm asking. I think state law, Mario, is 10% minimum. State law? I believe so. Oh, I, wow. I I read this recently that uh, the, the 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 people in the area uh, taking taking credit, if not bragging, about workforce uh, housing uh, don't have that much of a choice. It's there is there is a, a floor, as it were. Okay. So what do you think is going on? Um, 
Uh, I think you rightfully pointed out that they had school buses, they had kids, they had, you know, all kinds of traffic. All of a sudden, you're going to have uh, some apartments and, you know, and things have changed. What, 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 what are you making out of this? Well, the school has been closed for a long time. Uh, I dare say 10 years, maybe, maybe longer than that. Uh, that expansion of the 60s when they built all these schools and uh, when the Kingston Consolidated District actually expanded. They, you know, they, they reached out to West Hurley. Uh, yeah. To me, that's more of an Antiora uh, school, school than it is a Kingston school. Uh, in terms of geography... Uh, well, there's a school right down on the same road or right off of 375 that's in Antiora District, the Woodstock... Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it is. One's in the case, well, they, and they're on different sides of the road. But then you had another one uh, in uh, was it Zena? Zena too. Yeah, Zena. I, I, no, I, we're getting a little field here. Uh, it's some of it's the some of it is the typical not my backyard. Anything in my backyard. These these are single family for the most part, single family homes that uh, surround the uh, uh, this uh, this this school. Uh, I think part of it is because the school's been closed so long. It's been pretty peaceful. There hasn't been any kind of traffic in there. Uh, people got used to that. They like it, and they don't want the traffic. Do you think there's any issue with the developers and their reputation of not actually being um, uh, some of your finer uh, developers? I'm not aware of that, but if there is an issue, it's a, it's a legitimate issue. The, yeah. These are people, uh, for the most part, out of towners, and, and yeah. people look on out of towners with some suspicion initially, anyway, yeah. uh, coming into a community and uh, uh, you know pretty much dictating what's going to happen to that building. So, so that I, I was not aware of that. If that's a concern, I think it's I think it's legitimate. I think the developers made a real mistake when they threatened uh, the folks out there. They. Uh, at one point, uh, I believe, and I, I could be wrong, but at one point they they threatened to make it into a religious school. Oh yes, oh, was it Hasidic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If uh, if they didn't get their deal, mm -hmm. so that I think that's pretty dumb. In in uh, you know maybe you can get away with that stuff in Brooklyn, but that's uh, that's not going to play very well. That so may, anyway, that uh, may be a poison pill in it's itself. Break time. It's break time, and uh, we're going to turn this over to Lawrence Maxwell. Take it away, Lawrence. You're listening to Kingston Community Radio on WGHQ Kingston on your radio at 9:20 a.m. and 92.5 FM, and also online at mykcr.org. Question, what will you find on all over-the-counter or OTC medicine packages to help you choose the right drug and use it safely? The answer, the drug facts label. This label lists the medicine's active ingredients and purpose, how much to take, and warnings you should know before using it. Remember, even OTC medicines you buy without a prescription can cause side effects you don't want. So follow the information listed on the drug facts label. For more information, visit fda.gov slash drug facts label. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Introducing the YMCA. Sure, you know the Y for a swim or a game of hoops, but we're more than that. We're a cause. When you take a jump shot at the Y, someone else is getting job training. Practice yoga as a team practices her leadership skills. We give people of all ages, incomes, and backgrounds a chance to learn, grow, and thrive. So while you might think of the Y as the place for lifting weights, we're also about lifting entire communities. That's the Y. We're so much more. Visit ymca.net slash more. At St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, we're fighting against childhood cancer every day. At the heart of this battle are our donors. Most of us want to make some type of difference in the lives of others. St. Jude does miraculous work. The fact that no one has to pay, it's a place where everyone is treated as an equal. Everybody is welcome here. And it doesn't matter your religion or what part of the world you're from, all that is taken away. It just gives you some hope. It's just a nice feeling to put your energy into something that really does genuinely make a difference in a child's life. There's just no greater gift. If we have the ability to help, then we have a responsibility to help. Finding cures, saving children. 
St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Find out how you can help at stjude.org. Hi, this is Tony Marmo from Norman Staffing, and we've been bringing together employers and job seekers since 1980. If you're an employer and have job vacancies, let Norman Staffing help fill them with permanent or temporary workers. We screen, interview, and recommend the best candidates for your company. We make the employment process easier and faster for you. Please call Norman Staffing for your employment needs at 338-9111, 338-9111, or normanstaffing.com. Hi, this is Jim Quigley, Supervisor of the Town of Ulster, and I support Kingston Community Radio, and so should you. Rondout Savings Bank has a long history of serving local communities and maintaining a strong tradition of customer service excellence while providing each customer with the personal attention they deserve. Rondout Savings' approach to community banking puts you and the growth of your business in the front of everything they do. They're a different kind of bank and would like to tell you why, so please reach out to one of their expert business bankers for an appointment and let them show you what they can do for you. Rondout Savings Bank, always working for you and the community with branches in Kingston, West Hurley, and Hyde Park. Also online at rondoutbank.com, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Hey, you want to say something about All right. Good morning, folks. Uh, we're back to Kingston Community Radio. You Reynolds, Mario Catalano, and, of course, this is the highlight of the day. We're going to do birthdays. And today is a very, very popular day for birthdays. We have a number of them. And let's start with um, the Friday, July 9th. It says, please wish a happy 85th birthday, God bless you, to Alberta Bruno from your friends at the Rosendale Seniors. Alberta, 85 is a beautiful round number, and congratulations. Then we have a, uh, a second birthday, please wish... A happy birthday to Lucia Garofalo from your friends at the Hurley Perlers. Um, <clears throat> we have um, another birthday wish to the 85th birthday girl, Alberta Bruno, from your friends and family. Popular girl, Alberta. Uh, yeah, and then, you know, you get to be 85, you, you, you get some recognition here. And then we have, please wish a happy 58th birthday to Phil, Philip Karsten from your friends and family, mom and dad, your siblings, Karen and Steve, Tim and Kathy, Aunt Paula, all the nieces and nephews and greats. So, Phil, everybody in town seems to be wishing you a very, very happy birthday, as do we. And finally, we have a happy birthday wish to Gay Jansen from your friends at People's Place. We hope you enjoy your special day. Now, <clears throat> we have a lot of competition this morning, and the winner of the famous Boys Dairy Milk House Cow Pie for July 9th is Alberta Bruno. Congratulations, Alberta. And uh, you may pick up your, um, your birthday cow pie at the Boys Dairy Milk House at 62 O'Neill Street in Kingston. The cow pie comes to you courtesy of Kingston Community Radio and the Boys Dairy Milk House. And I just want to say because uh, the boys folks are so generous that my son had a birthday this week and my wife went and got a, a, one of the ice cream cakes and uh, his friends, we, uh, I thought I was going to have to beat them off with a, with a, with a baseball they, they bat. They are good. Oh, my God. And there's so many different ones to choose from. 
Yeah, and the kids were just loving it. Yes. And uh, yeah, that's. I mean, if you got a, if you if you need a birthday, <laughs> if you need a birthday cake, and there's nothing better than a Boys Brothers um, uh, uh, ice cream cake. Just absolutely fabulous. We also have a special announcement today, and this comes from the Coach House Players, the longest operating community theater group in Ulster County. And they're proud to present Friends and Family. It's written and directed by Barbara Jones, and it will be performed on July 10th and 11th and July 17th and 18th at showtime at 2 p.m. The uh, It's a fully vaccinated show. Attendees must bring proof of vaccination. Let's all be safe. Get your vaccination and get your cards. And um, <clears throat> it's, um, it's at 12 Augusta Street in Kingston, which is uh, uh, downtown. Uh, wonderful location. Beautiful theater. Tickets are $15 for general admission and $10 for anybody 18 and under. So come on out. Let's support Coach House players. They have an event this weekend and next weekend. And um, it's always, those are always great shows. So we're done with our business this morning, you. And um, so I, um, I've been observing um, that um, we have um, been having a little issue here between the controller the RRA board, the town of Ulster board. Um, uh, what's uh, what's going on here? I mean, what's going on? What you know? You've been covering this stuff for a long time. How I've been covering I, this stuff for too long? Uh, this this struck me. It's starting to firm up a little bit now. But the initial uh, volleys between the uh, the uh, legislature chairman Donaldson and the comptroller Gallagher struck me as a bit of a soap opera with uh, accusations and innuendos and suspicions flying back and forth. Can you give a little history for those who are listening in case they don't read yeah. the Daily Reg? Uh, the Comptroller uh, sought to uh, audit the RRA's contract with the county uh, regarding the compost, the controversial compost uh, 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 production at the uh, at the uh, at the resource recovery agency, and um, they uh, they have expanded that considerably. Um, I used to get my d dirt from a lawn from there. It's great, oh. great, great stuff, and yeah. very reasonable. Uh, if you could find a friend with a pickup truck, you could load it up for about twenty bucks. Wow! And uh, yeah, you can consider it for your garden. And, and this is good. This is good solid. So, so this is uh, food waste. Yeah, yeah. And so it's uh, it makes good compost. It makes wonderful compost. Uh, stuff grows that you've never seen in your yard before. So they they want to expand that as a way of re for two reasons. The main reason was to for to recycle <clears throat> this food uh, rather than shipping it out for I think a hundred dollars a ton yeah. to, uh, uh, to 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 their uh, land to to the landfill that they. They use yeah. out in West, yeah. out in uh, uh, Syracuse, near Syracuse, uh, Seneca. Seneca Falls, I think it's called. Yeah. And uh, so on paper, that that looked pretty good. And uh, there were complaints and rising complaints as it expanded uh, about the the odor. Uh, but you know uh, what they say: when you make an omelet, you have to break some eggs. Yeah. And uh, and the uh, the controller got involved because uh, she had some concerns about how a I believe it was a two hundred thirty thousand or so uh, grant uh, to to fund the pro the the program was being administered. Uh, she raised some concerns about, uh, uh, and I think it was in today's paper that uh, almost half of the uh, compost was going to. Uh, a person connected, however uh, nebulously connected I to an employee of an employee. the RRA, 
was I named Whitaker. Uh, you know, set up his own business where he was he was getting. You know, yeah. Ahead. So he took about it. It, it said, I mean, this is not. This is not. Uh, this is tons of stuff. Here. This is he, tons. He's got almost three hundred tons that he's <laughs> taken out of there, um, and uh, I guess he sells it to uh, local farmers, and. Um, Nobody seems to know if he's upcharging. Uh, he does charge a delivery fee, uh, and he's doing this as a business. And um, you know, the way it looks to me is somebody somebody had an issue with this and reported it to the controller or reported it to somebody. And you know, uh, you know how you know how things happen in small towns. Somebody whispered in somebody's ear. All of a sudden, the controller's in the middle of this. And uh, uh, <clears throat> what did you think of the response from the RRA when the controller asked for the information? <laughs> I, I was, I, I, quite frankly, I was amazed by it. Uh, what if, if there's nothing, uh, if there's nothing going on? Uh, I think the com the, the control then the controller is very insistent about this. Although I don't think school's out on this decision, on on whether she does in fact have the authority to uh, subpoena a uh, an independent uh, state chartered uh, RRA. It, the RRA was set up to be independent of people like county officials, yeah. uh, either be it Donaldson or legislators or the controller. Uh, interfering or uh, with their operation, uh, they they are as they point out they are routinely audited by the state, and there's a there is in fact uh, a special department within the controller's office uh, uh, that uh, monitors just these types of uh, authorities. The uh, technically speaking, I, the RRA is a, is an independent authority chartered by the state and independent of the county. That was the whole idea of the thing. And 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 the state auditors uh, failed to notice that one of the RRA employees was taking half of 300 tons of uh, <laughs> material out of there and, and, and reselling it. I mean, that's not much of an audit. If you ask well, me. it certainly is a yellow flag, if not uh, if not a, a a red one, that somebody should notice who has the who absolutely has the authority to to audit it. What's interesting is how they how they track it. They track it by license plate numbers. Oh, I didn't know that. <clears throat> yeah, so nobody asks anybody's name, and that's a pretty slick way of. So you look and you got all these license plate numbers, or this license plate took this much, this license plate took this much, and uh, that's kind of a way to keep names out of, out of the news. Uh, and you'd have to go and do some research. Evidently, Gallagher did some research and found that these license plate numbers were all connected to this gentleman, Whitaker, and that, you know... It, it, you know, I don't, I don't want to say anything um, because, you know, I don't, I don't have all the facts, but it just, uh, it smells like compost to me. <laughs> 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 it just. You kill me, Kevin. You, know, you kill me. It smells it just, like compost to yeah, me. Yeah, it's just a little stinky here. A that, stinky. Uh, Some stinks. <laughs> somehow one person would be setting up a business, um, uh, you know, selling uh, compost. From inside the shop. From inside the shop. Yeah, this is just like inside baseball to me. I wonder if this doesn't go back, not to give these, uh, one of the things I was warned about when I first started covering the politics, uh, a veteran alderman said, Huey, you, you write pretty interesting columns, but let me tell you, let me tell you something. These guys are not as smart as you think they are. <laughs> and I've learned that. Neither am I. But I gotta wonder I'm wondering now, just out loud as they say, thinking in my head, going back, go back a couple of steps. Somebody maybe somebody at the RRA says, you know, we can get a grant to expand this compost pile from for the weekend a weekend pickup operation yeah. to something really big. And and uh, Whitaker, you want to make a few bucks on this thing? I don't know. Uh, that's 
There's Probably nothing, smarter than they are. There's, yeah, well, you know, they were smart enough not to put names. They put license plate numbers. So yeah, there is that. You got to do a, just a little digging to, to to get you know to get through to the uh, to, to what's actually going on, and then of course you got a controller running for re-election. So without opposition, I don't think the controller is going to make a bona fide. So she can't lose. So I guess you could say she's not doing it for politics. Although the Are you trying to tell me that the Republican Party is not putting a candidate up? I'm not aware of one. Oh, wow. However, like, like the county executive, the, the controller is an ambitious politician. And yeah. she's not going to sit on that fifth floor for long. It, when and if, and almost certainly I think, the, the county executive moves on, to, yep. to some higher calling. Uh, so she's she, looking upstairs. She's, she's looking she's at got the, her eyes on the ceiling. That's not a glass ceiling either. She can see okay. right through it. Oh, baby. And she's on her way upstairs. And uh, this this is the bona fides. When, when, she runs for, uh, when she runs for county executive soon, in a year or two, or maybe, well, yeah. maybe a little less, uh, she, can, she can point to her investigative uh, efforts as a county controller. Uh, that said, it's something that needed to be looked into. And the legislature is directly responsible by law for the RRA. They appoint the legislature. You were there. Yeah. The legislature appoints the members of the board, and the board runs the RRA ostensibly. Usually the executive director runs things. But uh, <clears throat> why, the, why, the count, why, the, uh, why the legislature wasn't? They had to know if they didn't know about these this this Whitaker business, uh, the things we just talked about, those red flags we talked about. Uh, if they didn't know about it, they should have known about it. And if they if they knew about it, they should have acted or at least well, yeah, inquired. Nobody asked questions. You. I said nobody wants at, to ask the tough at, questions. At, at least inquired. And this is where this is where Donaldson comes in. Donaldson is a chairman of the legislature, and, and there's a committee that uh, I, I guess that gets periodic reports. And um, <clears throat> I don't know. Um, I I was a little taken aback by the chairman of the RRA board, who um, who indicated that uh, the controller was making a fuss over something. Um, I mean, earth to RRA chairman. <laughs> uh, controllers are elected to make quote unquote fusses. And um, <clears throat> what you needed to do is just be open, open and uh, forthcoming with the information. Not uh, remember, uh, this is our tax money supporting that operation um, ever since they went to uh, you know they, they, they've instituted all these rules my uh, my garbage collection my bills uh, tripled mm -hmm. all right so we're all paying t these taxes indirectly because in my opinion that's just the tax uh, tax on a service and, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and um, that's you know a hidden tax but I've got to pay X number of dollars to waste management to pick up my stuff and they have to dispose it and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, why don't we, we're all in this together. And um, if you were embarrassed about the situation at the RRA, well, then you never should have gotten yourself into that situation. All right? If you thought that there was something wrong with disclosing that one of your employees is carting 300 tons of compost out of there, then don't let them cart 300 tons of compost out of there. In other words, it, it doesn't pass the smell test, right? Exactly. <laughs> and uh, Why couldn't Gallagher come up with that line? This, this, uh, she did say something that she and I differed about. Uh, not okay. something we she and I discussed this on and we had we had a pretty I thought open frank discussion about it mm -hmm. she's she's like that I like that about her uh as a public official she's she's she's, she's forthcoming uh she 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 referred to uh 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 Donaldson's uh 
activities, supplying the controller with the information that he had, which I thought he had a duty to do. But she she took she took some umbrage with that. Uh, essentially, she wanted it directly from the RRA. She didn't want it secondhand. I I believe that's the sense of her of her uh, uh, concern there. She used the word that uh, for Donaldson to do that, to do what he has done. Now, keep in mind, Donaldson's running for election, and, and we'll get to him in yeah, a minute. Yeah. For Donaldson uh, to grab a couple of page one uh, headlines uh, with his uh, differences uh, with the uh, controller, uh, she called that dangerous, a dangerous precedent. And I, I was taken aback by that immediately. I said, dangerous? You're calling the the, 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 the the chairman of the legislature dangerous because he's inquiring or he's 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 attempting in this ham-handed sort of way uh, he's attempting to assist you in your investigation and yeah. she simply reiterated what her point was but I thought that was an exaggeration oh yeah 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 well you know um, it's it's so typical that um, uh, when a politician's wounded Yes. Boy, they, they just, they, they are... They, they, they lash out at you. Oh, my God. The, so she's, uh, you know, she's calling the guy dangerous. He's, he's wounded. She doesn't expect him to be back. And, uh, you know, she's now going to pander to the, uh, you know, the rising star and, and his group of uh, zealots who are, you know, uh, slowly but surely taking over the Democratic Party. So she's got to play to that, that left-wing gang. And well, she's very much part of the left-wing gang. Yeah. I think she's the leader. In the, I'm going to call it the left-wing gang, that, that, that segment of the party, which is, which is on the rise, obviously. Yeah, uh, yeah. She's, she's a big part of that. She's what they call a uh, progressive. Uh, touching on Donaldson for a moment, as kind of wrap this up, uh, he is running for re-election, and he has announced that he's, uh, he, he will he's staying on the ballot. He's on the ballot. He's got a good government. Uh, I think he's called the Good Government Party, which he you know self-created. With that, that happens all the Wisely time. Wisely self-created. Yeah, because, yeah. Uh, that kept him on the ballot. Yeah, he would have been out. Uh, he wasn't primaried for the Good Government. Now De uh, Donaldson has, uh, I think, demonstrated in his primary that he doesn't have a lot of street cred left. And I think part of that is neglect on his part. I think Dave got comfortable, got fat and comfortable, and uh, probably uh, not unquestionably mailed it in in the primary. He got 190-some votes out of 2,400 Democrats in his district. Wow. And the guy, the, he was, a, he is, was, is, will be for the next five months, uh, the chairman of the legislature. Uh, I would have... Uh, I would have voted for him. You know, the curious thing about his being chairman of the legislature, I got flyers as a as a as a as a constituent. I yeah. I live in Donaldson's district, and I got a couple of flyers. One of them had uh, <clears throat> one of them had the uh, the sitting at the desk shot with him and Ryan, as if to uh, lead me to believe that Ryan doesn't make a move without checking with Dave, and vice versa. Uh, the other though listed his various accomplishments over a long career most of them a long time ago mm -hmm. he put his third the third the third thing he listed not the first was that he was chairman of the legislature mm. to me that would have been his strongest suit yeah. i mean i'm not i i would hesitate to vote out the chair although i'm not aware of anything he's done for my district our district but i would be hesitant to vote out the chairman that'd be voting out nancy pelosi uh, if you if you live in San Francisco, this is this is a very interesting dynamic. I yeah, think. let's talk I about think that. You're bringing up a terrific point <clears throat> here. This is a very interesting dynamic. This legislature has virtually no power. Right. They have ceded, and he was the one that ceded it when he was chairman the first time, and he let Mike Hine run roughshod over the legislature. Blank, blank checks. Blank, whatever you want, Mikey. Yeah, and um, and now it comes back to haunt them because they have virtually no power. They have ceded it to the exec, and as a consequence, whether you're chairman of the legislature 
or the rookie uh, legislator of the year, um, there's not much you can do for your district. There's not much you can do. Um, you virtually have no power. Um, it's all, this is a, this is almost a, um, I wouldn't call it a dictatorship, but it's it's certainly a, a strong. It's an oligarchy. It's an oligarchy. Yeah, it's 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 a strong executive form of government where the legislature, as you said, dials it in. They don't. They really don't seem to be very active. I'll give you. I'll give you a prime example. I mean, uh, have they ever had a hearing that you can recall on any problem area uh, or? Just as an example, on this RRA, they have subpoena power, believe it or not. They have the right to have a, a hearing. Uh, I just question whether or not they even want to work. I, I mean, I just think they just kind of go along to get along. And I don't see much happening there. You, you never hear, virtually never hear from individual legislators. I mean, I was on the legislature. We had people that stood up and, 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 and uh, took strong positions on, on issues. And this group seems to be um, the silence of the lambs. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's absolutely astounding that um, if you when I look at their body of work, I, I just want, what are you guys doing? What, what is, what's, what's happening here? Plastic bags. I mean, garbage. Well, no pun intended. Yeah. Let's, let's just return for a moment to the, uh, and, and let's not dwell on it, but let's just touch on this, the dynamic of, uh, of, uh, uh, of the Donaldson. Uh, oh, yeah, that's going to be Tim interesting. Brooke, uh, yeah. earn, earn, earner campaign and now now it's a three-way uh the uh i think earner i mean this is july this, yeah. this, this can all change in two months but i think earner 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 was pretty much at peak uh with the vote that he got in the primary he had a small group of really dedicated uh activists yeah. in, in a true sense yeah. they yeah. got out and they knocked on doors and he, as he did as dave didn't yeah. Uh, they got out, knocked on doors, talked to people, and uh, uh, he he's popular in his own circle. Did he walk the whole district? Do you know, it's not a huge district. It's a third of the city. It's a did, midtown district. Did he come to your house? No, neither one. Nobody came to my house. So they don't come to my house for one thing. They don't want to come to my house because I generally know what's going on. They want to go to your house where you. <laughs> I shouldn't say your house, but they want to go to some house where somebody barely reads the paper. Or they or they targeted they targeted their group. Well, that'll do it, too. And uh, so what happens is um, in the general election, a lot of non-enrolls get the vote. Yep. And uh, that's going to be very difficult to target. Yeah, by definition. They don't. Yeah, you know, yeah, they don't fall into any any particular uh, definitions. Yeah, they are independent. And in a three-way race, I mean, anything can happen. Well, two things are going to happen. There's, there's going to be uh, traditionally, it's it's uh, it's almost embarrassing, the the low turnout for any legislative races. People don't know who the legislators are and don't seem to care. And the legislators are fine with that, as you point out. They can they can hide in the weeds, get elected for about ten terms. And then uh, collect a pension. Okay, there are three legislators in the city of Kingston. Do you know the names of all three? Because I don't. I only know two. You know, my memory's not what it is, but okay, I'm not sure. That's my point. There's a guy named Abe. Yeah, Abe Uchitel. Uchitel, and then he it's ran for mayor. Dropped and that. that yeah, and then there's a there's a Peter uh, Criswell. Peter you know, Criswell. Criswell and Uchitel are freshmen. They're rookies. There's been a big turn. Well. There's been a fair turnover in the city and legislators lately. So those, those you, you expect they need a term to, to kind of get their feet wet. Neither one has been outspoken about anything. I haven't heard a word. But then it was 2022, so there was a lot of 20. You know, the last year, there was it was a very different you would year. I think that with a $360 million operation, uh, somebody, there'd, there'd be an eyebrow raised somewhere. 
I mean, you know. Well, the operation is run by the executive, not by the legislature. Exactly. The legislature is running for re-election primarily uh, because the, and they all say the same thing. I don't know if they get in the room and uh, agree to this, but they, they say that we are the uh, we are the policy-making body of the government, and we are, and we hold the purse strings. Neither one is true. Exactly. The executive makes his policy through the budget, just just like Andrew Cuomo does. And uh, as as far as purse strings, ninety nine point something of the executive's budget. Let me finish. Yeah. The ninety nine point something of the executive's budget is, is unanimously approved by the legislature. So there go the purse strings. Mm. And then we come back to to what we have here. I think that there's just too many of them. There's twenty three of these people. In a county of 180,000, maybe maybe a few less, uh, 17 would be fine. Now, wait a minute. It has to be divisible by three, doesn't it? It should. And it has to be. The rocket scientists who set this up did not make it divisible by three, which made it, instead of a two-thirds vote to override a veto, they actually need a 74% vote to override a veto. That's how dumb these folks were. Well, president being what it is, they could they could they could then have a. Uh, I think the, I think a, the, the number I like it for, for what it's worth is seventeen, uh, from twenty three to seventeen. Well, I think uh, be about ten thousand. Fifteen would be. Fifteen would be. Fifteen would work is for for me. But you're not going to get legislators agree to uh, give up their seats uh, just because of some. Uh, well, you see uh, the philosophical I, difference. Where they control that is it would have to go to a vote. It would have to be a charter amendment. Yeah. And, go and on these the ballot. people are extremely reluctant to amend this charter. And this charter is far from perfect. This charter needs a lot of work. Uh, one of, you know, part of that is the fact that the executive has um, a lot of control over the controller. As you saw with Hine and Auerbach, when Hine didn't like something and cut Hauer and just slashed yeah. Yeah. Auerbach's uh, budget and staffing and and rearranged things, and <clears throat> that should never be allowed. That the if you want an independent controller who is beholden to only the taxpayers, you, that has to be in the charter. And that provision was awful. I mean, I don't I don't even know how this thing. Um, um, because it's not independent. The, the controller is not independent. This controller cannot take on this executive if they still want to have an office and a secretary. They could have nothing. They could be sitting in the basement. Uh, <laughs> the executive, hey, move her, move that, out of the fifth That's floor. how much power the executive has. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, what do we got here on the agenda? We've got four or five things to well, get to. Well, the one thing I thought that uh, 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 we should <clears throat> mention that we failed to mention earlier is uh, the Immaculate Conception Bazaar. I was going to mention that. Well, come on, man, mention. Uh, uh, like so many other things, it, it was not, I don't know if they did it in 19, but they definitely didn't do it last year. Yep. And that's an annual event in Kingston that uh, is, a, is a midsummer gathering. For, 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 it's one uh, of the best. It's one of the best. The food is terrific. Uh, you, you get to see your friends and neighbors you haven't seen for a while. And uh, it's a the new it, priest down there is really, he's loved. Yeah, he's Father loved Merck. by everybody. Yeah, yeah he's good. And uh, uh, I pray for good, <laughs> pardon it, uh, I pray for good weather tomorrow. Uh, it's on tomorrow from, I think, 5 to 10. I think it's on tonight. Five okay. to five I'm to not ten. sure. I'm yeah. not sure. So it's definitely on tomorrow. But you can, uh, folks out there, if you, if, if, this is a, this is a, don't miss bazaar. Just check on the website, and I'm sure it's all the hours are listed. And on the same, same, let's 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 give a Saugerties Car Show a, a shout out. Oh, is this weekend? The, it's the a, car it's show? this weekend. That's a great show. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the, uh, the Syracusano yep. boys from yep. um, they do wonderful community they work. They are guys. they they are they are bastions of that community. Yep. I know. I think one of them's on the show here on Wednesdays with uh, the Saugerties group. And uh, okay, so they'll be they'll be plugging it. Yep. <clears throat> well, they, 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 they it'll be over. They should have. Been doing but it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I I love that car show. I love that show. What what beautiful automobiles. Fantastic. And uh, 
you know, uh, that, that's, that's, that's another no miss. Okay, folks, so we got you up to date on um, a couple of other um, interesting scenarios. As far as the Donaldson race is concerned, oh, again, I think you. our opinion is that this, this is probably an open book. It depends on how much work Dave is willing to put in, and if, um, if I understood you correctly, um, has uh, Erner a shot? You know, his, uh, his well, his Erner is the Democratic candidate, and he's on the line as the Democrat. So it's those be who blind, blindly vote, vote Democrat, they're well, just going in there and pulling yeah, the lever. Yeah, they have yeah. no clue who the hell they vote no for. Clue. I think yeah. the I think the wild card in that race is going to be the Republican candidate, which is unusual, highly unusual, given the demographics in that in that ward. Uh, of the, I mean, in, in terms of enrollment, uh, the demographics I think would probably uh, uh, lean toward uh, uh, the um, uh, the Republican candidate who is uh, give me her name. Tim Brook. Yeah, uh, I can't remember her first name. Uh, Tim Brook's uh, uh, a young black woman. Uh, just getting involved in uh, uh, wow. uh, 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 politics. Uh, if she if she goes door to door and if she works at it, she 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 can be a factor, and and it could very well that uh, it would very well happen that uh, 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 Ernest Erner, excuse me, Erner and uh, Donaldson would uh, split the Democratic vote. She could, uh, in a three way race, you can get elected with thirty five percent. Wow. It's, wow. it's unusual. And I don't recall that there's ever been a a uh, woman of color on, on the legislature. Never. There's only wow. been two men of color. Uh, so so she would be she would be uh, breaking some ground. She'd be shattering some glass, as yes, they she, say. Yes, she wow. would. Wow. Good for her. Good for her. And good for the Republicans. For Very good for Republicans. No, and, and nominating. That opens up a whole, uh, uh, whole, whole new area for them. And, and they've got to do something. They're sinking every year. It's like it's it's it's, it's kind of sad to watch it. As 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 yeah. uh, we 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 become almost a one party county, and I don't think that's healthy. Well, you know, part of that is like you know I've always asked the question: Where did these twenty thousand newly enrolled Democrats come from? We the population of Ulster County has been stagnant. Yeah. So. The only way you can increase your enrollment by 20,000 is people who are already living here change their enrollment to Democrat. I don't know if that happened. You know, I don't want to go I don't uh, I don't want to go uh, anti-Trump here, but the last the last 4 years, I think the Democrats recruited uh, or attracted a lot of independents and uh, maybe a few Republicans. That uh, came over because they didn't like what was going on down okay. there. Okay, so. that, that's some of it, I think. All right, it, it isn't all those New York City people. Okay, but there are quite a few of them. Quite, a, no question. Uh, who have decided that they want to vote in Ulster County, so they actually don't become residents of Ulster County, so they're not counted in the census, but they can vote here. Well, college students aren't counted in the census as being here but they vote here. Yeah. And as a consequence, <clears throat> there's no connection between the census rolls and the voting rolls. So you can say, <clears throat> I, wanna, I wanna vote in Ulster County, I'm an Ulster County citizen, but when the census people come around, they're sending you your census form to your New York City address. And <clears throat> nobody, there's no cross-checking and I don't think the census uh, uh, figures are available to cross-check. So that's what I think happened, is why we had so many new voters, but not so many new citizens, because they got counted. <clears throat> Remember, the census sent out, the census sent out to your last known address. And so they, <clears throat> you, they those, those uh, census forms were sent to New York City but those folks are saying, well, I'm actually an Ulster County resident for purposes of voting. That's, that's what I think is going on. That is the only thing I can account for to have 20 or 25,000 new Democrats 
and not have a population increase at all. We had nothing. Anyway, we have a caller. Good morning, caller. Uh, good morning. Um, um, I, it's a unique opportunity for me to uh, ask this question. Um, uh, to, uh, you know, very uh, high-powered uh, bra uh, uh, brain trust of our area. Um, uh, the, the, the question I have, and, and, and this issue uh, is going to uh, continue to bubble up, um, uh, the use of uh, uh, those electronic machines for tabulating voting. You know, it's going to uh, uh, come up uh, time and time again as, uh, as there's some question of the um, hackability of, of those voting machines. And uh, what I wanted to pick uh, your, your two brains is uh, back in uh, 2019, um, there was that uh, very uh, highly contested uh, election for a district attorney of Ulster County, um, and and there was a uh, there was a blip, uh, not unlike uh, the blips that uh, were reported on uh, November third in the presidential election. And the blip was someone got injured uh, while they were tabulating, and and there wasn't a oh, Dominion yeah. mm -hmm. Dominion voting machine employee on the site, and and he 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 was he might he or she might have been the one who. Uh, had had an accident or sprained ankle is is that an accurate statement? Yeah, that person was taken to the hospital, and apparently the whole state they shut down the board of elections and followed the guy to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's highly uh, unusual, and uh, I'm not I'm not uh, making an accusation, but um, uh, I I you know it's it's going to come up that whether we should uh, go back to uh, uh, you know a, a more um, a uh, traceable uh, voting system and not and not use electronic machines which are uh, on, you, have, you know connected by modems to uh, to the internet and and you know the local people when I talked to them said oh, oh no they're they're not connected no they they're all connected uh, electronic machines can be ghosted you know I'm, I'm you know uh, I have uh, you know uh, experience in this area so. Um, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, uh, every time I see a close contested election, and then I see somebody taken to the hospital or the shutdown, uh, w was there any ins insinuation in this area uh, that uh, that there could have been um, um, sleight of hand? I, I I heard of none, and I uh... I know the guy who was taken, and he's uh, he's a Republican. He's actually a Republican committeeman. So he had no axe to grind either way on that race because he he was uh, he was one he's a Republican committeeman in the town of Ulster. Yeah. So what, what my understanding was that um, um, Kavanaugh was ahead uh, in the in the uh, in machine election count. day yeah. election day voting, yeah. and then um, the, the the question you know the, it, 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 it's I'm not going to make any accusations, but what I'm saying is. Um, the, now there's a lot of complaints about uh, the district attorney's office, and and you know so on. Uh, Clegg was not as qualified, and so on and so forth. I just I just want to point out, you know, it, it, I'm, I appreciate you guys allowing me to raise the issue, and and, and maybe you know as we go down the line, uh, we can continue to uh, debate uh, whether we should get rid of uh, electronic uh, machines uh, in tabulating the voting. So that that's my call. Yeah, thank you, caller. Uh, let me let me just add that uh, uh, the two party system uh, uh, has its checks and balances, and they watch each other pretty carefully. And in a in, in an election like that, uh, which was settled by fewer than a hundred votes out of about forty thousand cast, you you can be assured, I believe, that both sides were watching very very carefully for any uh, skullduggery or someone trying to take advantage or breaking an ankle or what have you, and that uh, if there had been something going on, and, and there, 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 uh, particularly for the Republican candidate, there was a career on the, sti on the, uh, on the, uh, on the line. Uh, uh, Kavanaugh had worked his whole life to be district attorney like his father, so I don't think he would have let the slightest... Uh, uh, hint of uh, impropriety uh, uh, go by the boards. Uh, he would have challenged it uh, probably in the courts. So I, uh, I'm, I'm confident based on that that uh, that that was, however close, a uh, a fair election.
I agree. I agree. You got to remember, Kavanaugh was outspent by about four to one. Massively. George Soros yeah. sending in a half of a million dollars on a on a district attorney's race where he allegedly didn't even know the 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 the, the person he was supporting, and you know that's that's tough to overcome when you have a. 20 something thousand vote uh, disadvantage and then you're outspent three or four to one that's you know that that's that's a tough one and um, but but hey Metzger raised what 900 grand and she lost right yeah so it could work both ways I yeah guess. it can it can happen yeah. you no know, you're absolutely right she outspent her opponent about nine to one yeah. and uh, yeah. but she made a real big mistake and uh, you know with that agricultural bill she had the farmers up in, uh, you know, in pitchforks. They were, they were coming. Torches, torches. And she torches. refused to come on the show with you two for the debate. I think that was the real thing. Well, we couldn't soccer. get any Democrats on this show. Yeah, <laughs> Hinchy either, right? Well, yeah, Hinchy. no, no, we couldn't get Hinchy either because they had such a plurality that uh, they, they, their attitude is, why do we have to debate? You know, just uh, let's go to the polls. We got all the folks going to pull that lever. And uh, they were one of them was right and one of them was wrong. We still can't get Hinchy on, <laughs> and we won't. And we won't. <laughs> uh, uh, this this caller touched on the DA's race, and let's just touch on the DA's office. It's been a significant change. Oh yeah, in command over there, <clears throat> and that uh, 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 the chief assistant uh, district attorney, which was Kavanaugh's job. Uh, two years ago, uh, Joan Van Loan, highly respected uh, 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 prosecutor, administrator. Uh, I think it's uh, uh, Katie Van Loan. Excuse me, Joan Van Loan's. Yeah, she's in Van Loan's beverages. Right. My mind is gone. Yes, All right. Kate. Uh, she she has uh, resigned. Resigned officially. Yeah. Wow. Retired. What do you want to call? Her? She's done about twenty years. She's still a relatively young woman. The young mm -hmm. young prosecutor, yeah. I should say. Yeah. And then uh, they brought back uh, a very popular guy, actually. Uh, I'd actually like to see her run as a Republican. I'm not sure she's still a Republican. I believe she changed her enrollment. But it doesn't matter. The Republicans will run anybody. They, have, they just have no candidate recruiting system at the moment. So she could come back and challenge, uh, Clegg. challenge Clegg in the next election. You know, she's a pretty popular. Her father was Frank Reese, who extremely well-known. Yeah. But it's uh, obviously a shakeup in that in that in that department. Uh, parenthetically, I I would say you mentioned Soros and and Clegg. Um, I don't know what your impression has been. It's uh, Clegg has been in office for about six full months now. Um, I, 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 I don't see uh, Dave Clegg as a Soros uh, uh, puppet, and uh, I think he's probably disappointed a lot of people on his left. That his uh, his policies uh, and his attitudes toward crime prosecution have been more middle of the road than uh, than we might have expected. I mean, look look around the country with the other DAs that Soros has uh, has, uh, has supported, it, and it's cut him loose, Bruce. Uh, the, you know these. It's, yeah, they don't believe in uh, even jail terms. No, no, they don't believe in prosecuting. Yeah, but, all, you know, all of that. I, I, I would I, I actually uh, totally agree with you. You. I think that uh, uh, George Soros probably um, tried to buy a district attorney and found out that um, he wasn't for sale. He wasn't for sale. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, I completely agree with you. I don't know all of the policies. I understand there have been, you know, a lot of issues in that office. Uh, but um, what I do, what I do know is, I know Dave Clegg for a long time, and I don't think that uh, he was. I think Soros may have made a miscalculation on that one. He probably might have not known about bail reform either. He could have saved his money because these guys have all been elected rounds. Clegg, they're not really doing anything yeah. because there's no one, there's no bail. So right, you know, I, I you know, I walk by county court all the time. You know, it's, it hasn't it's what, been in session maybe 
half a dozen times since the COVID restrictions have been banned. I mean, you, you used to see stuff in the in the paper every day about you know people getting tried and you know all that stuff. It's all over. And I think another thing too is uh, the the county judge isn't quite as uh, liberal as they were expecting. Uh, he's been he's been pretty tough on some of the sentences for people who have committed egregious crimes. I, I, and that's what we expect. That's what we expect. I think uh, I think both of these folks uh, have uh, have been where they should be, and that is in, right. the middle, in the middle of in the middle of the road, which is what we expect. We don't expect some left wing wing nut or right wing uh, nut. Uh, they they should reflect, I think, broadly their their own constituents. They they live in this yeah. community. Yep. These are the people that they're sworn to protect. And prosecute when necessary, and 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 to act accordingly. If if either one went way left or way right, you would you would you would have an immediate pushback. Yeah. And they're they're they're, they're politicians too. And, and, and rightfully and they, so. And, and they're aware of that. So, yeah, I, I you know I thought bringing back Emmanuel was a was a good move. I believe he was um, first appointed by Mike Cavanaugh. Uh, back in the 90s, I believe um, he may have been um, he may have been um, uh, a chief assistant yeah. uh, under Don Williams, and uh, very very competent, high quality, uh, great attorney. <laughs> so. Um, I think that that was a good choice. I guess my question would be, uh, why would they why would they bring somebody in from Dutchess County to do this initially? You know, if he was available. But uh, I think some of that had to do with uh, 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 Clegg's inexperience. Uh, it it could have been played up more during a campaign, and it might have made a difference. I I didn't think that uh, Kavanaugh played that card, which was legitimate. There, there were legitimate concerns about uh, Clegg's uh, uh, lack of uh, prosecutorial experience. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he was, uh, I think, unfairly characterized as, as a slip and fall lawyer. You know, insurance cases. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, then that's what he did. But uh, uh, and and I think that was reflected in, like any startup organization, uh, re reflected in the, the slips and starts yeah. that 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 start his. Uh, but that that's similar. The difference is is that you don't gen, 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 you generally don't put somebody in who doesn't know anything about the job he's taking, although we do it all the time with politicians. Yeah, that, I think I you know, <clears throat> as a casual observer, I um, uh, you know I've been involved in a number of countywide races. Um, I, I you know I I really wasn't um, consulted on that race. I probably would have. Um, recommended they be more aggressive in in the um, in the experience um, department. But you know, Mike's race uh, was conducted by um, a very close group that had gotten his father elected many times, uh, and. Um, that's who he chose to go with, and uh, very little outside uh, uh, consulting. And um, I think they were a little reluctant to be aggressive. They were running, um, unfortunately, they were running an 80s campaign yeah. in, in uh, you know, in, in, in 2019. Yeah, in, in, in 2019. And uh, that's the, you know the result speaks for itself. Even even with that, it, with what I considered a very poorly run campaign, he came extremely close. So uh, it wouldn't have taken much. One percent of the vote would have swung it to less, him. Maybe less maybe than even that. Even less. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if they did enough polling. I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't know what they did because I, I... You weren't involved. I know. I had, 
I had no input, and uh, I don't even think I was called for a fundraiser, if I'm not mistaken. I'm, I'm just astounded. So Kavanaugh really had three strikes against him. He was outmaneuvered, he was outspent, and he was out enrolled, and he still finished within a half percentage point. Exactly, exactly, because, again, that experience factor, a lot of people were aware of it, but just not enough. I understand not to not to talk personal about Kavanaugh, who I who I like and as as as, as I liked his father, that uh, he seems to be uh, pretty happy in the private sector now. He's making a, a nice living uh, with uh, Joe O'Connor. I think he's with Joe O'Connor's firm. Mm -hmm. uh, he's making a nice living, uh, far more than he would have made as a district attorney. People it, don't realize how much these attorneys, uh, these good quality attorneys, give up. For, to, for to, public service. For public service. I mean, they just don't. It is it is significant. Many of these folks could triple and quadruple and even more their incomes in that private sector, yet they choose to be public servants. And you really have to admire them uh, for that. And Mike has these uh, young daughters who are pri probably are teenagers now, are pretty close to it. And you know what comes right after that? Mm. Uh, some serious bucks for school. He doesn't maybe. realize it, but if he has two teenage daughters, he's about to become one of the dumbest guys in the world. <laughs> and the poorest. <laughs> and he'll get married <laughs> yeah, on top and, of and that. About, you know, about 10 or 15 years later, after you know their six-figure weddings, <laughs> uh, he's going to become one of the brightest guys in the world. So it's a, there's a, you know, there's a, a rite of passage here that <laughs> you have to go through. I, I remember, you know, I, I only have uh, five children but one daughter, and uh, it was uh, quite interesting, you know, raising her. And uh, I had to be the dumbest guy going, you know, for a while. The air. Yep. So it looks like uh, we are... You guys did another wonderful job today. All one another wrap. Another wonderful see you in job. two weeks, folks. So if Meet you up see, on some politicians you tune in, today. Hugh and Mario are on every other Friday. Join us again in two weeks for, for Hugh and Mario, and we'll be back on Monday with Medical Monday. Have a good weekend, everyone.